Hi, Mr. Negron. Thank you for taking some time for this interview. You're welcome, Samuel. Thank you for the invite. I'm Samuel Habib. I am 20 years old and I live in Concord. I'd like to ask you about six issues that are important to people in the disability community. The budget, health care, special education, employment, housing, and voting. Okay. Given projected shortfalls of state revenues, many states may be forced to make cuts to programs that support the health, safety, and independence of people with disabilities. What kind of solutions would you propose to ensure that people with disabilities are not disproportionately impacted by these budgetary deficits? Well, the first thing, Samuel, I would do is I would work closely with the governor um, and his organizations that deal with individuals with disabilities. One of the things I think that I bring to the table is having been in the state legislature, I have an opportunity to work with those folks that would then be able to give us and work with people like yourself, understanding exactly what the issues are and how I can help down in Washington. I think part of the reason that uh, some things don't happen is because there's a lack of communication. Um, I would be uh, an open door to be able to talk to the governor and his organizations that deal with this situation and figure out what it is that I could do to help and get the information back or get funding back. Um, but I would be an absolute proponent of being able to help the governor um, and his agencies uh, to provide those kind of necessary resources. COVID-19 has threatened to overwhelm the resources of medical providers to a point where doctors may be forced to choose which patients receive treatment and which do not. No one wants to limit medical care for COVID-19 patients, but plans need to be developed in case rationing becomes necessary. Currently, an advisory committee is developing guidance for hospitals. What would you want to see included in this guidance? Sure. Well, certainly what I would like to see is get us back to a point that we were prior to uh, COVID-19. Uh, and just uh, from a business perspective, is get the economy going um, so we can start getting back to somewhat normal. Uh, I think everything is, is, is important, um, especially these kind of recommendations coming out of this the study committee as to how we're able to, to manage it. it, it to two point, Samuel, it's going to be a balancing act. Uh, I believe that, that everybody's going to want to be able to have an opportunity uh, to, to have a say, uh, to be able to get some of those scarce resources that are out there. But to me, and I talked this, I was talking to, uh, to the New Hampshire Police Association yesterday, and it's about listening. It's about understanding um, what, what those things are. Um, I would take that information and then figure out how I can work with you um, and the agencies uh, to figure out how best I can support going forward. I have been included in regular classes since elementary school and that helped prepare me for college. What will you do to help kids with disabilities be included in regular education and college? Well, absolutely. Well, first of all, you know, at the state level, you know, we have somebody, uh, on Mr. Frank Edelblut, who I think is a phenomenal individual that's setting up our educational efforts here in the state. And again, you know, I, I have and I know um, um, individuals like yourselves that have been able to be productive uh, because they've had the same opportunities in the education, both at the state level and going on to, to the college level. Um, I believe that there are, there are opportunities out there and funding that I would fight for to bring back to our state uh, to make sure that you and everybody else in your situation has the same opportunities um, that everybody else has, because I think that you're, you can, as, as by evidence of this meeting here, um, be productive, and I think I'd do everything to make sure that those opportunities were there. Do you think that the ADA and IDEA are being properly enforced in New Hampshire and nationally? And if not, what will you do to make sure that these laws are actually followed and enforced? Well, the first thing is, is to have knowledge of sometimes where it's not being enforced. Um, and the American Disabilities Act, you know, certainly um, how is that being applied here in our state? Um, again, once again, working with the governor, um, if there are some things that aren't being done, that's a state issue. But if there are opportunities out there that we can modify um, laws that have come out of Congress, 
to be able to have a better way of implementing the ADA or things that are short and not being done accordingly, um, then I would bring that information back and work with the governor and make sure that we're able to apply the ADA way that it was always intended uh, to be applied. The second one, I gotta be honest with you, Samuel, I haven't heard of, um, but if it is legislation that's out there, my approach would be the same way. You know, it was there and intended to be helpful, not to be a hindrance. And if there are some things that aren't being done, then I certainly would be a proponent of making sure we fix it. One in five Americans, including 19% of likely voters, experience a disability. What will you do to help more people with disabilities get jobs? Well, sure. Well, certainly there, there are things that I think that we, we should look at in a broader perspective. I think a lot of people, unfortunately, are afraid of, of hiring people with disabilities because of a lack of knowledge of what they actually bring to the table. Um, I would look at those industries that would be able to, to help um, people with uh, disabilities. I would look at legislation or support legislation that gives uh, industries and companies um, an ability or a benefit if they do hire um, folks with, with disabilities. I think that's something that, that can absolutely be done. I don't know if there's anything that's out there right now that incentivizes companies or businesses to do that, but I would look at doing it something that incentivizes them so that you um, and everybody else that's out there that has disabilities have a right to be able to, to, to get a great job, make a good living, um, become as self-sufficient as possible. Um, but to be able to do that, we have to understand what the landscape is that's before us. And if there are some ways that we can then make sure that those barriers to entry um, are reduced or broken or removed altogether, then I'd certainly be in favor of that kind of legislation. What efforts are you making to reach out and employ people with disabilities in your campaign and your staff? Sure. So we reach out and we go out to a bunch of colleges, and that's primarily who we reached out to, to have the kind of um, staff that we have. Um, nobody yet has volunteered for us, I and mean, we make it open to all uh, to help on the campaign. Um, nobody yet with a disability has, has approached us, um, but I certainly am the one uh, that if they have an ability to provide uh, help to this campaign, regardless of the personal situation. Uh, my campaign is an open door campaign and we would certainly bring those people on board. But to date, Samuel, nobody with a disability has asked uh, to come on board. What steps would you take to increase the availability of accessible housing for people with disabilities? Well, clearly I would actually work with those builders and I know even within the state of New Hampshire, you know, there's the same issue we had with veterans housing, we could take the same approach and look at how we could put up um, really quick modular homes, good um, energy efficient homes that are uh, that comply with ADA that allow people to be more self-sufficient. I would look at is there federal money that's out there that allows and helps builders to do that. Uh, it would have to be a concerted effort, a joint effort um, with the disability groups that exactly where in the state we could put those, where's the demand. Um, I believe that there's an opportunity to, to have a target uh, to be able to do that kind of stuff. And I know personally some builders that would be absolutely confident to, bit, uh, to try and help and build some of those uh, facilities so that they can be uh, utilized with folks with disabilities. If accessible voting equipment was purchased with federal funding, it cannot be used in local or municipal elections. What steps would you take so that accessible voting equipment is available in every New Hampshire election, including local elections? Sure. Um, that's that's news to me. I did not know that um, these kind of uh, this kind of equipment uh, can only be used at the federal level. Um, I would look at certainly how do we modify that so that it's used at the state and local level. Um, lacking that, are there grants or some sort of um, block grant money that we could get um, for the state to be able to buy the same type of equipment if we can't change the law to allow that to be used? at the state and local level, and I work with Governor Sununu and his staff to figure out if there was a way to be able to help the state uh, get some resources to provide those same type of equipment um, so that people could vote at the state and local level. Those are all the questions I have for you. Thank you so much for taking time to do this interview. Uh, thank you very much, Samuel. It's been a pleasure, and, uh, and best of luck to you. Don't forget to vote on November 3rd. Thanks.